At Bosworth Academy, our mission is to have a relentless focus on our children. We are an extraordinary school with unique values. Our young people can make such a difference to the world, especially during these changing times. That's why our education is deeply rooted in strong values. We believe that student achievement is more than just academic success. Our focus on the six C's and global competences prepares students for life after school. We provide a range of support to enable our students to achieve their aspirations. We provide for our staff a world-class programme of professional learning, making sure that we learn from the best international research and studies and we put that into practice in our own learning and teaching approaches in our classrooms. Our teachers will really look to light that spark to get students really excited about learning so that we can find the passion that's within every learner. We aim to prepare our students to confront the future with real imagination and creativity. We are in the top 20% of sixth form providers in the country and all our teachers are subject experts with high expectations. At Bosworth Academy, we truly strive for excellence and together we achieve. Good evening and welcome to our live Q&A here at Bosworth Academy. My name is Ben White and I'm one of the, uh, the deputy heads here. The way the evening is going to work, we've got a, a number of uh, prepared questions that our, our parents and students have sent in and we're going to go through uh, some of those. Before we get on to those, I'd like to make a few introductions and just let you know who is going to be here this evening to support some of the questions and the live questions that you're able to put in the comments box underneath the video. So I've got Rick Moore, head of Key Stage 3. I've got Kathleen Baxter, one of the deputy heads here at Bosworth Academy. I have Steve Hall, who's a lead practitioner, who is responsible for learning and teaching across the, the life mat, so a number of schools. And I've got head of school, Simon Brown. So as I've said, we've had a number of questions that have been sent in prior to the evening, and we're going to tackle some of those first. But please feel free to add questions to the comments box and we'll look at tackling those a little bit later on in the session. So first of all, I'm going to hand over to Rick Moore, who's going to talk a little bit about how the facilities and the school works day to day. Mr Moore. So, in Key Stage 3, our area is called the Laureates. This is only accessible to students and staff, uh, Key Stage 3 students and all staff. Key Stage students will have a lot of their lessons in the Laureates area. They'll have um, their humanities lessons. They'll be there for tutor as well. In the Laureates area there are toilets, there are lockers and the Laureates office where you can access the Laureates Year 2 for Year 7 or Year 8. As well as this, obviously the students do go out in the, around the school, so they're able to use our PE facilities, our sports dome, our sports hall, our swimming pool. They're also able to do art subjects, art and design, cooking, textiles, resistant materials in our design area. And also of course science. So they'll have science lessons, a dedicated science area with, with science staff. There is a Laureates only playground, which is only accessible to Laureates students. But we do find that our Laureates students quickly access the rest of the school. They become confident very soon when they've arrived here and are soon everywhere around the school. We've also got other facilities like our compass area, um, which is our excellent library with a range of facilities in there. And all key stage three students get one library lesson a week where they can access the library and use it for reading or our accelerated reader scheme. Okay, thank you, Rick. So students now know where they're going. We've got all these fantastic facilities in the school. Uh, Kathleen Baxter is now going to talk to us about how students are supported academically when they're in those lessons. So all students are supported primarily by their teachers, first of all. So that is right the way from Key Stage 3 
all the way up to A level. So your teach all of your teachers will be experts in their field, all specialists in their subjects and able to teach all the way to A level and some beyond this. Um, also, in terms of academic help, we have your tutors. They will monitor your tracking. You'll get tracking two or three times a year, depending on which year group you are in. Your tutors will look at your tracking, discuss this with you, and see any areas where you may need some extra help. On top of this, we're really lucky to have academic tutors. So these are based in English, science, maths, and humanities. So if you need some extra support in any of those areas, you can get either one-to-one -one or group tuition here. Also, we have mentoring programs. So this is for sixth form, for key stage three, and for key stage four. And these run in a variety of different ways. Okay, thank you, Kathleen. One of the questions we had earlier on in the week from uh, one of our parents was around the Aust Ofsted rating. I'd like to pass over to Simon Brown, who's going to talk to us a little bit about that. Good evening, everyone. Very, very different doing this um, remotely rather than having you all visit our school. Um, we are one of a um, very few number of schools, which um, is an 11 to 18 school in Leicestershire, which has an outstanding judgment from Ofsted, which we're really proud of, but we're not defined by that. Um, our mission is a complete focus on our on our children and um, we're also really proud of um, one of our achievements is we we rewarded world-class schools quality mark um, and that's a mark which shows that 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 outstanding judgment from offset the impact it's having on our students and our students were the ones who are actually um, accredited as being world-class students really proud of that it gives them all sorts of opportunities in networking with um, other young people from right across the country in all sorts of different um, schools and organizations um, and, and the whole aim of world class is to ensure that our students can flourish in an emerging global economy we also have proudly flying as a, as a flag outside of our school uh, a world uh, sorry, an investors in people um, flag we have there. We achieved gold status from investors in people. And you'll see that in a lot of businesses around the country and actually internationally can, can have a look at that accreditation. And we do that because we want to be the kind of school that invests in all of our staff, whether that's support staff or teaching staff. We're in the top 4% of organizations to have that gold award. We ensure that we have you know, really high quality professional learning to keep all of us at the cutting edge of what we do. And we do that because we want to do the very best for our students. Um, at the same time, there's a focus on ensuring we meet the well-being needs of our staff, which is so important uh, these days. We're also very proud of achieving an award from ALPS. A lot of people haven't heard of ALPS. It stands for A Level Performance systems and that looks nationally at how well six forms and colleges are achieving how much progress their students are making and um, we achieved an award from alps because our school had constantly been in the top 20 percent of a level providers nationally so so yes great um, feedback from ofsted but there's a whole host of things that we do to make to make school an amazing place for all of our young people okay thank you for that simon when young people move from primary to secondary school, one of the questions we often get after we've done our presentation or when we um, are able to have you know, parents and students come in to look around is around you know, how children are kept safe, uh, things like anti-bullying policy. I'm going to pass back to the head of Key Stage 3, Rick Moore, who's going to talk a little bit more about that. So in terms of physical safety when you come to school, you'll notice that all the children wear lanyards and all of our doors are on a lanyard system where you can only get through if you have the right lanyard. So no one can get into the school that we don't want in the school. Um, in terms of safety in school, we've got very, very strong pastoral support at Bosworth, certainly in Key Stage 3. Um, and I think that starts at tutor level. Um, we have nine tutor groups in each year group. Our Year 7 tutors are hand-picked, so they're people we know that will be successful in Year 7 and be able to work with our younger students. So that's our first sort of level of support and safety. Um, the next one is our year heads, and I think our Norwich year head team is quite unique in that we have two different types of year heads. We have what we call pastoral year heads, 
it will deal with safety and supporting students outside of lessons. So if there is any bullying, if there are any concerns outside of lessons, it's the pastoral years that will pick those up and will deal with them. We also have teachers who act as academic year heads and they will support students in terms of their progress, the progress they're making, the subjects that they study, in terms of what goes on in lessons. So that's two facets of our sort of support. And then the final one is we have a key stage three mentor who works with students one-to-one -one or in small groups and she will provide support on friendships, on emotional support, on health support and things like that. So a real range of support in the lobby for all of our students. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moore. The next uh, section, I'm, I'm going to lead this, and it's around a, a number of questions that we had around uh, getting in, um, so around admissions, and then getting here if you're successful with a place, uh, and questions around uh, transport. In terms of admissions, all of the instructions um, for that in terms of the, the form filling and what you need to do, uh, there'll be a link on the website um, and that'll be available um, from, the, from this evening. And all the information you need it will, be, uh, will be on there. In terms of our catchment area, and, and will I get a place and won't I? And I did have a couple of questions about that this week. Um, what I can say is there are uh, a, a admissions criteria and in recent years, most of our year groups, so the 250 pupil admission number we have, do come within catchment. But it's one of those things that as a school we cannot predict. What we can only do is tell parents and students what has happened in the past. In terms of advice around admissions, the best place to go to will always be uh, Leicestershire County Council. That's who we ask to organise our admissions. And as I say, all the information you'll need will be on there. If you are successful and you, and you get a place, uh, we are a school that actually uh, organises our own transport. Uh, a lot of other schools in the area will just actually say, no, the bus companies are going to deal with that. Um, we believe strongly in organising transport because we want to make sure that there's a service there that supports the young people where, where they live. So depending on where students live and where our new students in year seven and year 12 uh, live, we will organise our routes around those students to make it convenient for them. One of the other things that we can do as a result of organising our own transport is we can keep costs down. And that's because we as a school believe it's absolutely critical that every student and parent should have a choice where they send their child and shouldn't be put off by really high transport costs. Information about transport is normally sent out um, after places are guaranteed and that's in the summer term. And there's lots of information there about how much the transport costs, where the transport goes and the steps that you need to take. There's some very good questions about that, so thank you. I'd now like to go on and come back into school. Uh, I'm going to go back to, um, to Rick Moore with this. Um, and you know, quite often in our presentations when we have people coming in and walking around, um, it's quite a lot of information about our curriculum and that kind of diet that students are going to get. So, Rick Moore. We have quite a diverse curriculum here at Bosworth. We do the traditional English, maths and science, and students spend a lot of time doing these. We also do humanities, which encompasses geography, history, RE and citizenship. And I'm also really pleased with the way we do our other subjects like PE and performance and ADT, art and design. So PE, you get to rotate round various different things. So you might do invasion games, things like football and basketball. You may do that for a period of time, six or seven weeks, but then you're rotating, you might be doing swimming or you might be doing some movement. Same happens in performance. Performance is comprised of dance and drama and music. And again, you would study that for a half time, a period of time, and then rotate round to the next option. So we really get in a go, it's everything, you're not just doing one thing. The same happens in art and design. So in art and design we've got a wide range of subjects, where we do art, we do textiles, we do cooking, we do resistant materials or product design. And again, you would rotate round on those different subjects. As well as being all those subjects, as well as being the practical, there are theory elements to it as well. So the students are learning, say, in art and design about health and safety. All of our students do a language, it's either French or Spanish. Um, it's randomly chosen, but if you have a preference for one or the other, we will try our best to accommodate that for you. All students also do computing, uh, which is computing is coding and programming of computers. Where we are unique is in our enrichment, which students do four hours of this a fortnight. This is something outside of the normal curriculum that students might choose themselves. Something they're really passionately interested in, or it might be related to a GCSE they might want to study later on. 
So it could be they choose something like media studies, which you can study as a GCSE, or it might be you pick something like forensic science, which is just a passion that a student might have. So a real range of subjects and students' options to really develop our six C skills. Thank you, Rick. Now, I'm sure you agree, you know, what goes on in the classroom is really, really important. And what Rick Moore just talked about there, all those different options and those exciting opportunities that the students get here at Bosworth are absolutely fantastic. But I'm now going to pass on to Steve, who's going to talk about what happens outside of the curriculum with our extracurricular. Steve. Thank you, Ben. So we have a wide range of extracurricular opportunities, not only in sport, but in the performing arts and in music and other areas. Uh, across the school. Starting with the performing arts, we have um, dance opportunities um, after school mainly. We have the Bosworth Theatre Company as well with drama and music combined um, to take your performance skills onto another level. Um, and in terms of sport, we have lunchtime clubs, we have regular lunchtime basketball and uh, football opportunities going on throughout the day and they're open to anyone to turn up and play and those are led by recognised qualified coaches. In terms of school teams in the sporting environment, we have um, all the major sports are represented across all age groups and boys and girls teams. We enter the football leagues, the rugby leagues. Um, we have one-off tournaments in things like cricket, dodgeball, um, in swimming, athletics. You name it, if we've got demand from the students, we will do it, we will enter it, and we will uh, give you that opportunity to try and represent your school. Um, aside of that, we also run intraform competitions um, and more local competitions. So at the moment, for instance, because of COVID, we are entering uh, a virtual um, inter-school athletics competition. So we will take advantage of whatever opportunities come our way. Okay, thank you, Steve. One of the questions I had actually was a little bit more specific, Steve, around um, elite sport and students that are involved in um, kind of clubs and you know kind of high level. Um, competitive sport. Can you tell us a little bit about the ESP program? Yes, so ESP stands for Elite Sporting Potential Program. Um, we're quite unique in that we're one of the few schools that offer anything like this. Um, we recognise that there are a significant number of students who spend a lot of their time dedicated towards a sport with the intention of getting better. These are students who compete at a level quite high above their, uh, the normal club level. So they're um, certainly county or beyond. We have students at this school who compete both nationally and internationally. And we want to help them balance their academic needs with their sporting ambitions. Um, so the ESP programme allows myself as a coordinator to look at their timetable. and Where necessary, we will make timetable arrangements. Um, we have uh, students, for instance, who are at um, Leicester City Football Club, Derby County Football Club, who those arrangements may well need to be in place. Um, we can um, fast track um, absence requests. So if there are opportunities for them to compete internationally or uh, a long way away nationally, we can look at facilitating that and working with the teachers to ensure that they don't fall behind. So. The programme is a bespoke programme, it's on a needs basis, so if that is something that's relevant to you, make yourself known and I will interview you and we can take it from there. Brilliant. Still kind of linked to uh, extracurricular, I'm going to uh, pass back to um, Head of Key Stage 3, Rick Moore, who's just going to talk a little bit about some of the opportunities with overnight stays and trips. So we do a range of trips at Bosworth. I looked and we do, we, we tend to do over 70 trips a year, as high as 100 trips one year. Um, we do in Key Stage 3 two residentials. So in year seven, they go to Caythorpe, which is a PGL type activity place. Um, that's normally during October, but it will be in April of this year's year seven. Um, and then our other residential is year eight, and they go to France, and they normally go to France in June. As we move up through the Key Stages, Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5, trips tend to become more curriculum based. We still do the residentials, um, but we do lots of trips during the day where it's just a day trip. Um, but it might be geography field trips, it might be business studies trips, it could be English trips to the theatre. As well as curriculum trips, we do lots of trips on raising aspiration. So we might visit universities, we might visit employers to really push our students to think about what they want to do, what they're going to aspire to when they leave us in year 11 or year 13. One of the things we don't do is we don't do lots of expensive trips. We try to look for options which are affordable for the average family. Um, so all of our trips should be affordable, but we do offer support 
if you if it's necessary and you need it, we will offer you support. We want to all of our students to go on a trip. And it is one of our aims to get every student in every year group to do at least one trip a year. Okay, thank you, Rick. Now, as a geography teacher, I really uh, really like the next question, uh, which is about, you know, how do we ensure that what we do here at the academy is keeping our environment safe? And I'm going to go back to the head of school, uh, Simon Brown, for that. Thank you, Ben. Um, we certainly are an environmentally aware school organisation. Um, we're all deeply passionate as staff about our, our environment. We believe our young people who are on to you know, inherit that legacy of the world need to be need to be brought up in a way that you know they will they'll move forward with that. Um, one of our six C's, so the six C's are those global competencies which we wish our students to to leave our school with that to go into the world. One of them is around citizenship and and being people who will make those changes. Um, we we do all sorts. We have recycling bins right throughout the school and within every single classroom. We have a, um, a garden which we've created, which our uh, students and through enrichment that Mr. Moore talked about earlier, actually as a study, they develop the garden and they look at um, you know, planting and more trees and orchards around school. Um, we've got our own solar panel plant on top of our um, sports hall area, which generates a lot of our um, electricity from, from solar. Um, we we take all of our year eights out in the summer. We do some work on the local environment, and we take them all on a walk. I think that's about five to eight miles over to Thornton Reservoir, pointing out all those key things about the environment as we do that. Um, within Key Stage Three, we have a cross-curricular project-based learning um, focus on energy, and we look at how every area of the curriculum. Um, an impact on looking at our energy needs as, a, uh, as the world, really. Um, all sorts of work on health, well-being, and you know the impact of that on the environment. So we, I think, as, as Steve Hall said earlier, we look at um, two hours of dedicated PE throughout the school curriculum, and that's at Key Stage 4 GCSE as well, because we believe that's really important. Um, our PSHE programme has a real focus on environmental awareness, health and well-being. Um, and we have a real focus on um, students' mental health. And we talk about that really openly and look to um, support, our learn support our students, support our learners and signpost additional support where necessary. Um, and we were also accredited with the Healthy Schools mark as well, something that we're really passionate about. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the, the plan questions. I, I'm now kind of uh, very, uh, very excited um, to, to introduce Steve Hall again, who is going to present a very, very exciting opportunity um, for students coming into our year seven next year. I'm going to stop saying anything because I'll probably spoil it. So Steve, over to you. Well, in a moment, we're going to show you a promotional video for this, but this is an exciting new curriculum opportunity for our Year 7 students next year. Mr Moore's already spoken about the wonderful curriculum we have in place at Bosworth. We've looked to take that one step further and look to harness the power of our cross mat collaboration between all of our other schools in the life mat. And we've come up with something that we are calling the real life curriculum. Um, and so we're going to show you a video now to show you what that looks like. Students in the real life curriculum are taught the knowledge, skills and values required to positively influence the world around them. Students are taken on exciting multidisciplinary learning journeys that are collaboratively planned and delivered by subject specialists. Learning starts with an immersive experience that brings the learning to life and helps students to understand why this is something worth exploring. Everything we teach is linked to the real world. This challenges students to apply their knowledge in order to find real life solutions to real life problems. Students are coached by the teachers in areas such as character and critical thinking, which enables them to provide positive, constructive and helpful feedback to others. 
Subject specialists help the students to excel and create work that is ready to be showcased to others in the form of an event, exhibition or presentation. The showcase gives students a purpose to their work that extends far beyond traditional written tests. The Real Life Curriculum is available at both primary and secondary level. All successful applicants to a Life Math school will be invited to apply for a place in the Real Life Curriculum group at that school. The Real Life Curriculum is heavily influenced by the latest global educational research and is geared towards preparing our students to thrive in an ever-changing and unpredictable world. Our students learn much more than facts. They learn to develop a wide range of competencies that will enable them to contribute positively to the world around them. So the Real Life Curriculum is an amazing new opportunity. We're looking at uh, an enhanced version of cross-curricular learning. Everything that you would be taught is brought to life and given that real life context. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, there's more details available on our website. If you go to the Bosworth Academy website, um, bosworthacademy.org.uk forward slash RLC, that's forward slash RLC at the end, you will get more detailed information about the real life curriculum. Okay, thank you, Steve. So uh, as people have seen, there's been some live questions coming through when we did the, the first section and then showed that, that video. So we're going to address uh, a couple of those. So thank you for those questions and do continue to, to add those. So Simon's just going to pick up some of the, uh, the A-level responses and talk a little bit about that. Yes, so um, we, we are mentioning entry to sixth form this evening as well. But yes, we will have a special event, maybe a little bit similar to this coming up after, after half term. Um, so just to pick up on some of those questions, we have students enter our sixth form. Again, there's admissions criteria that's on the website, but they join us from Bosworth Academy year 11, but then uh, more than half of our students join us from other schools around Leicestershire. Um, so, you know, a number of schools near us in the area, but then also moving into the city, moving out towards Warwickshire, students join us. And again, as Mr. White said earlier, we look at transport and how we can bring students to us. Um, we, we really pride ourselves in encouraging and enabling students to choose four year levels, or that could be three year levels and a BTEC. Um, and that, that choice gives students that range, that breadth, and then what usually happens as they move into year 13 is they may choose to focus then on three year levels before possibly going off to university or the world of work. Um, we'll talk so much more about um, entry requirements and what you need to get into our sixth form um, at the next event, although you'll find on our website lots of detail around that very inclusive sixth form and we know as i said earlier that we can achieve amazing things with our sixth form um i'll pass back over to mr white okay thank you very early on there was a great question about is is bosworth uh, diverse um, and there was a, a lovely response from one of my, my colleagues in terms of diversity and inclusion um, and bosworth is a school that, that hugely prides itself on both of these things both diversity um, and inclusion. Um, our, our SEN numbers um, are, are higher than, uh, than, than average schools um, and actually we're very much a school of choice for, for students who do have specific educational needs. We have more looked after children in this school than other Leicester and Leicestershire schools and again we have a very close relationship with the virtual school who choose us as a school of choice if they have a young person move into area. In terms of diversity, uh, you know, our school uh, demographic and population is, is made up of a, a wide range of ethnicities uh, and we do everything that we can to celebrate all of that diversity within school. Our strategic plan is actually wrapped around this idea of equity and equality and making sure that we have that in everything that we do. So, for example, uh, this month we're celebrating Black History Month. 
in November, we'll be having a full week of Diwali celebrations and you know, making sure that we have students really respecting and understanding and celebrating the diversity of, uh, of others. One of the other questions that we had was around uh, school uniform and GCSE subjects and I'd like to uh, pass over to Kathleen Baxter who's going to give a bit of feedback on those. Hi, so our school uniform is, uh, we have a laureate's uniform where they wear grey um, trousers or skirts and a purple jumper. Um, and then moving into GCSE for year 9, 10 and 11, um, it moves to a grey sweater as opposed to the, the purple. And then for the sixth form, there is no uniform as such, but we do have a dress code. So the sixth form, you've got the perk of being able to wear your, your own clothes and more freedom. But we do have um, some, some little rules that we like students to follow. For example, no ripped jeans. Um, but yeah, so there are three policies and we are strict on our uniform. We expect students to be wearing that every day. Um, also, um, I saw from Escake, who um, has put a few questions about um, GCSE subjects. Most of our students take either 9 or 10 GCSE subjects. That might um, differ, if, for example, if you're taking all three sciences separately, as opposed to the combined science where you have two qualifications from that. So a majority of our students will either take 9 or 10 GCSEs. Okay, just to pick up on some of the questions that have come in live there, um, unfortunately due to the current situation and with half term, um, being able to come in and have a look around the school and being able to do that safely is not going to be possible. However, there's going to be a lot more information on the, uh, on the website, there's a lot more um, uh, videos from all of our subjects. So after this event you'll be able to have a real explore of the school, meet more of the teachers uh, and see whether it's going to be the right school um, for you. I'm um, going to pick up a question there about um, know that you are safe at school. I think I'm going to pass back to uh, Mr Moore who mentioned a little bit about this um, at the beginning. But it might be worth Mr Moore just having a talk about that kind of school within a school and the laureates area with the, uh, the security cards. Certainly, physically in the laureates, um, it, the only people allowed in there are school staff and laureate students, so that's year 7 and year 8. It's on a card so you can only get in through the card if you've got the right card. Um, so seven and eight students are safe within that environment. Of course they're free to go anywhere around the school, they, they all do, um, but it is very safe. There are staff on hand to support you, Laurie's staff, Laurie's office is based in there. Um, if you come to the window you can get support, you can get help. Um, but as I say, physically you are within the Laurie's area, you do not go out there under the blessings if you, unless you want to. Okay. It's also worth picking up on that when, whenever we have visitors to our school, um, they always comment on how amazing our students are, how um, thoughtful, how kind they are, how supportive they are of each other and um, relationships. We really pride ourselves on the staff student relationship and um, you know every member of staff will look out for every child in our school um, and we're, we're very proud of that fact of whoever comes in and usually we would to our um, parents around and, and, and let you freely see how, how safe our school is. Sadly we can't as Mr White has just shared um, but through lots of those videos we put on soon you'll be able to see a lot get a lot more flavor for the school and what it is like to be a Bosworth Academy student. Okay so a couple of questions are coming there um, kind of linked to kind of money and, and finances. One of the things that we pride ourselves on here you know in everything we do is, is personalization whether that be in the, in the lessons um, or things like financial support. So uh, the question up there in regards to you know support for trips and things like that we take every single case you know, individually, you know, we're happy to have those conversations and wouldn't see a young person not get an experience because of that. In terms of uh, paying for food, we are now a cashless school. We use a system called Squid and all of uh, the students will receive a card like this. Um, and if a student has free school meals, it will be automatically put on and students can put money on there in school and it can also be put on um, at home using the Squid system. Just to pick up on the point um, around uh, uh, bullying, we very much have a kind of a restorative approach to kind of any sort of uh, uh, behaviours, and that includes bullying. Um, we you know, take it very, very seriously. Um, we look at both working with the victim and the perpetrator, because we feel that's kind of the best way of getting those kind of long-term outcomes and making sure that students feel safe. 
Mr. Moore's already talked about the extensive pastoral um, system that we have here. We invest financially very heavily in um, non-teaching support staff who are able to have those conversations and have that time. They're not yearheads who have to run off to lessons. They are there for students all of the time, and both working with you know, potentially the victim of bullying or the perpetrator. So I help, hope that question um, has been, uh, been answered. Okay. Extracurricular. Extracurricular. Yeah. Yeah. Sixth form students. Thank you. Sixth form students have the opportunity to get involved with our lunchtime clubs, and we do run sixth form teams as well. If the demand's there, we run it. Okay. So, for instance, uh, most recently we've had a, a school football team for the post 16, but that wouldn't rule us out of uh, running other teams. If the demand's there, we will do it. We've entered cricket as well in the recent past. Um, there was a question there, wasn't there, about um, allergies and medical needs as well. Do you want to pick up on that, Ben? Uh, yeah, so we, you know, we have a, a number of students and you know, who have had EpiPens in, in the past. Uh, we have yearly training to make sure that the right people um, have got the training, and they're mainly the people that are in um, those kind of non-teaching pastoral roles to ensure that they, uh, that they are safe. Um, students with um, kind of maybe high medical needs, uh, we've had a lot of adaptations this year and we've now got a specialist area for um, our uh, students who do need extra support. So we have the OP Centre, um, which is a, a centre for our SEN students dedicated um, for, for young people who need extra support. Um, they've got their own entrance, they've got their own outside space as well. Um, it's something that's new to us and we're kind of still working the best way of, uh, of using that. But it's certainly a, a real benefit for us to have that um, as, a, as a school. Um, I think that question mentioned about a nut allergy and we're a nut free site, we're not allowed to, to serve nuts in the canteen and students aren't allowed to bring them in in packed lunches either. I'll pick up six form. Yep, six, six form. Six form question there around equipment and so on. Um, we, we haven't mentioned as, that as a school we very much focus on developing the learning technology skills of our students. Um, we have to call ourselves a Google school. Every student would be provided with a, um, a Gmail account and equipment wise, a lot of our resources are shared electronically. So we'd have electronic, um, electronic textbooks and so on, teachers collaborating online with students. And within our sixth form, there's, there's lots of facilities, um, lots of um, PCs for students to work on, plus laptops that they can loan out. And our library is extremely well equipped. So all sorts of equipment support there. And then um, teachers would be providing you with um, lists of you know, reading lists and other kinds of materials that you might well need. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brown. Question there about um, learning difficulties. I think I covered that with the OP Centre. Um, it's a very, very kind of open space with smaller working areas. We have a really strong um, SEN team um, led by the Senco Lorna Croucher. We have really highly skilled learning support assistants as well who kind of really personalise their approach for, uh, for every student. And just on that note of personalisation, I know the comment again around free school meals and support with trips. We really do work with parents to make sure that no student is going to miss out from uh, any of uh, those opportunities that are provided. Um, the school is currently the largest it's ever been. Um, we're just over 1,650. The year seven intake is 250. But please remember, we have that school within a school model. So whilst that might seem quite daunting, when they come here, they do feel like they've got their kind of own smaller school to get used to things um, that, are, uh, that are going on. Um, Simon, do you want to talk about the swimming pool at the school? Someone's just Before mentioned. That. I wonder, I think Rick while, has on the, while we're talking about the 250, I think it's important to talk about how we um, help students that have come from a range of different oh, primary schools. Would you like to do that, Mr. Moore? Um, so, when we do the induction process, our year heads will go out and visit as many of the schools as possibly can. And if there is a student who's just coming from a school they only student, we will go and visit them and talk to them about what they expect from school and talk about what we expect. Of course, as well, we don't put students into friendship groups and we don't pick friends to be in a tutor group. So everyone going to that tutor group will probably be in the same boat where they've not got many students they know. So it's a fresh start for everyone and everyone makes friends. The tutor works really hard in those first few weeks of induction to make sure that everyone fits in and everyone makes friends. Of course, if there is a problem and you've come from the school and you're not making friends, you can always come to the Lawrence um, office, um, speak to the pastoral year head, who will be able to talk to you 
and direct you so that you can make a few more friends and you can get on a bit better. Okay, thank you. Can I just say absolutely overwhelmed to everybody that's uh, supporting this evening and, and writing some fantastic questions. We really do um, appreciate that. So there was a question about the swimming pool. Yes, yes, we do have a swimming pool. Yeah, and we're looking forward to getting it fully open again. People can come in from the community, but hopefully in these uh, post-COVID times, we'll be back on track with getting swimming into swimming lessons again, uh, okay. SPE lessons. Brilliant. In terms of the catering facilities, there is a, you know, the potential to be able to buy food at both break and at lunchtime. And of course, you are able to bring your own food um, as well. Just picking up on the question around GCSE subjects, um, they do choose those from, uh, from the end of the year eight, but then they start in year nine onwards. Um, we don't have any students doing it, any of them early. There are some slight exceptions with, with languages, but that's something that we'll talk about um, nearer, nearer the time. In terms of the free periods question, and I know there was a question earlier about the uh, post-16 event, um, there is going to be something similar to this that's dedicated just to post-16, so please look out on the website for the date um, with that. Next question is kind of linked, you know, this kind of idea of uh, uh, iPads and, uh, and mobile phones. Um, the mobile phone policy in school is that students are allowed them, but when they're in school, they are switched off and out of sight. Um, that is because uh, all students who join us in year seven get their iPads to support learning. Um, and obviously you can imagine how helpful that's been in the current situation. It really, really does support um, our, our kind of drive towards this idea of hybrid learning, which is that idea of learning um, at home. We have a huge number of platforms that we use that kind of develops independence and allows kind of students learning to go on beyond um, the, uh, the, the, the classroom. That looks like it's the end of the, uh, the questions there. Can I just um, apologise if there's anything that we've not answered or if there was a question that you sent prior to the evening. Um, we have got uh, details and addresses that we'll be able to uh, do personalised and individual responses. I think I've already mentioned there's going to be a lot more information on the website from tomorrow. This event itself will also be on there available because we've actually recorded this and that will be on um, the Bosworth channel and we'll make sure we've got a link um, for that you'll be able to explore all of the different subject areas. So please do take time, sit down, have a look at some of the videos my colleagues have had a look at. There's one of the things that we've kind of really missed out on doing because we've not been able to do that live open evening is for you as parents and students to first of all meet our fantastic students here who always do a fantastic job on open evening, but to see the passion of the teachers. And I really hope you've been able to see that from us um, today. So a huge thank you um, from you all for joining us. If you do have any further questions, there are contact details on the, uh, on the website. Do contact uh, the Laureates team, which is our kind of key stage three, our year seven, and I'm sure they will be able to help you. Thank you very much. Have a pleasant evening, and we hope to see some of you 